Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon, and I'm talking to Professor Steve Redhead. And Steve, I'm very interested, as you know, in the Read Write Web and Web 2, but I wonder what you think about how the Read Write Web has transformed the teaching and the learning of law, legal studies and criminology. One of the things that's really noticeable, I think, in perhaps the last decade, maybe the last five years, is the way in which law, criminal justice systems, civil justice systems and so on, actually around the world, have become kind of law live. For example, they, at one time, courts and uh, aspects of the system, were really kind of slow to change. But eventually, information technology penetrated those systems. So, for example, you do get people tweeting live from courts and so on, but you also get a set of uh, architectural setups, which are, for example, in court, you have laptops, you have computers, which at one time you simply didn't get. The system, legal systems, criminal justice systems and so on, were actually slow to change. They were way behind the information technology and the read-write web. But I think in terms of teaching, that now allows you to use these resources, if you like, law live, in a different way. It's possible now certainly to use all sorts of aspects of what are are called open educational resources, podcasts and so on. I tend to use them in this way. Using material which is actually available for free in a way which certainly law teachers, criminology teachers and so on wouldn't have used in the past. They would not have actually gone to these sorts of open educational resources. Think also that you're using material which is keying in to this idea of law live, that actually the system itself is, with a bit of digital delay, actually part of this instant communication. It's caught up. You can see it in something like the Leveson Inquiry, for example, probably one of the first uh, public inquiries, certainly in the UK, which has actually used this sort of information technology and has become law live. I was going to ask you about that, Steve, because the Lord Justice Leveson Inquiry is interesting, and obviously you've got a personal linkage with that, because I believe you worked with him at the very early stage of your legal career that you might want to tell us about. But the irony is your experience of this spans from working with Lord Justice Leveson early in his career and your own, and also your monitoring for teaching purposes, how... Twitter in particular and the tweeting live from the inquiry is folding back or feeding back onto and into the inquiry. Yes, I think I mean, Leveson as a logist, Leveson as a judicial figure is actually very interesting. I, I did actually work with him in my early career. I was working for solicitors in Merseyside and he was a young barrister who we actually uh, used in, in cases, particularly a mental health review tribunal case, which was a quite a celebrated one on Merseyside, which he won for us. And I think it's quite interesting if you look at the development of people who are actually really quite part of, of a traditional legal system, now suddenly coming into the glare, if you like, of what I, I would call law live. It's actually, the Leveson Inquiry is really interesting because you're able to follow live these sorts of discussions, which are actually sometimes on say, BBC or, or Sky News, where millions of people are watching them. But actually, if, if, you're, what, if you're listening to these things um, and, and following them on systems like Twitter, for example, you're actually getting comment culture uh, instantly, but also you're getting a kind of whole new stack of, of resource material, people's interpretation of what this public inquiry is doing and what legal implications there might be, for example, for ministers, for media moguls and so on. I think this is quite different in the sense that in the past these sorts of public inquiries have been seen as quite safe, uh, conservative institutions. They may have been uh, set up in uh, the white heat of debate, but actually they've often been to close down debate. What's actually happened with the Read Right, right Web is that comment culture has meant that it's completely opened up live a system which was really closed down in the past.